In the previous lecture, we talked about spherical pressure vessels. Here, we want to talk about cylindrical pressure vessels. Similar to what we did before, we are going to talk about what types of stresses are expected to develop in cylindrical pressure vessels, also how to calculate those stresses. Also, we present the equations for determining maximum shear stresses, also strains in cylindrical pressure vessels. I'm going to quickly talk about the proof of the stresses, but before that, we need to know that there are two types of stresses, two types of normal stresses. Two types of stresses that we have in these problems are the stress developed along the longer edge of that vessel, which we call that longitudinal stress, and the other stress is perpendicular to that, or with what we call it as hoop stress. Let's see how can we determine those stresses. We follow the same concept as we did before for spherical pressure vessels. Let's start with the longitudinal stress. To determine the longitudinal stress, we cut that, as shown here in this figure, and then determine the forces caused by the internal pressure of the liquid. The resultant force would be the pressure multiplied by the area. Area is pi radius squared, and pressure is P. That means that the total force would be pi radius squared multiplied by pressure, or P. Similarly, on the wall of that vessel, there will be stresses, which we call them sigma longitudinal, and to determine the, the resultant force of that, we multiply that by the area at which the stress acts on, which is similar to what we had before. It's the perimeter of the circle multiplied by the thickness. Perimeter is 2 pi radius, and thickness is T, using the equilibrium equation in the longitudinal direction, we come up with sigma longitudinal equal to PR over 2T or PD over 4T. This is, is exactly similar to sigma A that we had before on that spherical pressure vessel. All right, that is for longitudinal direction. For determining stress in the hoop direction, we need to have another cut. I'm going to cut that as shown here. We want to make all the equilibrium equations for that. Um, if I consider stresses acting on the side of this slice, stresses on the liquid on the left and on the right of that slice are equal to each other, so they are canceling out with each other. So there is nothing to be worried about that on that part. However, stresses in this direction should be equalized with stress developed on the wall thickness, right? So how much would be the stress of the internal pressure acting on that area? The stress is internal pressure, or P, and the area is, as shown in this figure, delta X multiplied by the diameter of this uh, vessel, which is D, or 2R. So the total resultant force would be pressure, or P, multiplied by 2R delta X. And delta X is, is the length of that slice of uh, vessel. This force should be equalized with the force that is developed on the wall of that vessel and how much is the resultant force developed by these uh, hoop stress? It is hoop stress multiplied by the area. How much is the area here? We have two tiny rectangles. The rectangle on top has the area of delta x multiplied by t. We do have the same value on the bottom, so that is simply 2t delta x multiplied by sigma hoop. Setting them equal to each other, setting these two resultant forces equal to each other, we can determine how much is sigma hoop, and that is PR over T or PD over 2T. All right. I'm going to note that, similar to what we had before, we would have, again, two types of stress elements. One is located on the outer surface, another one located in the inner surface. The inner surface is also subjected to the internal pressure, P, and... We have two different stresses, longitudinal directional stress and hoop stress. And I'm going to summarize all the equations that we have. Stress in the longitudinal direction is PD over 40. Stress in the hoop direction is twice of that, PD over 2T. I'm not going to prove this part here, but the proof is very similar to the proof that we had before. Using the Mohr circle, we can determine how much are the maximum shear stresses. The maximum shear stress in the outer surface is PD over 40, and the inner surface is PD over 40 plus 
internal pressure over 2. And for strains, we would have two equations. One for the longitudinal direction, 